Eva Guzman, Justice of the Supreme Court of the State of Texas. Yes, I grew up in Eastwood, a couple of blocks from Landrip Elementary, before it was trendy. <laughs> So my memories are the East End are obviously uh, very good memories because they symbolize family, they symbolize community. Uh, I like to call it my barrio. It's not the barrio anymore. It's very, very trendy. I went to Landrip Elementary, then I went to Jackson Junior High. I would walk from our house to Jackson. And then I went to Austin High School and I graduated from Austin High School. And like I said, that entire community, I'll always consider just my home base. You know, the struggles at the time, unfortunately, are some of the same struggles that families face today. It was a changing neighborhood, the demographic was changing, and financial struggles. I can remember many times going without or just being timid about asking my parents for school supplies or for the workbook money. So we just didn't have it. Um, and expectations. You know, at the time, did our counselor see in us the next Supreme Court Justice or the next um, senator or the, you know, I'm not sure that at the time they saw in us, in, 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 in the Latino kids from, from that community, the, the great expectations that, that um, we should all see in our children. Um, you know, when we can answer the question, how are the children, then we know that as a society, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and putting our priorities where they are. Well, let me tell you about my family. My mother and father emigrated from Mexico in the 1950s to Chicago. They were from a little town outside of Monterrey, outside of Linares, a little town called Hualahuises, Nuevo León. And it was a very small rural community. They came to the United States with nothing in their pockets but big dreams in their hearts and hope hope for a better life for their children. And I think that they understood, even with their elementary school educations, they understood, they had the capacity to know that there was only one way out for their kids. And I remember my dad, um, there were no excuses. We weren't allowed to miss school. We weren't allowed to bring home any grade that wasn't you know, as high as possible. And there were severe consequences for that. So. The result was first one goes to college, then the next one, then the next one. And so the older siblings really um, made it possible, I think, um, for all of us to go because that, that was the ethic, that was the expectation. And there was a work ethic. We, My dad got up every morning for 35 years and went to work and never complained. So we were taught that hard work was part of the equation. You don't live the, the miracle of America without that hard work. And um, I think that's what allowed us to, to graduate from college and to go on to do, in our own rights, um, respectively, great things. We have to turn obstacles into opportunity. Do you have to work harder? Yes. I, if I told you that you didn't, I don't. that would be disingenuous. Of course, sometimes, if you're the only person that looks like you in an industry, you have to work harder to, to, to really excel or to shine or to exceed any expectation. When I leave the room, I want people to have gotten more from me than they ever expected. And it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and a community and mentors along the way. So I think that I remember growing up um, looking at some of the, the, the women that had already gone into the professional field. I worked my way through college at a bank, and I remember one of the assistant vice presidents at a bank uh, was female, and she was smart and she was pretty, and I, I just wanted to be here. And coincidentally, 40 years later almost, not really, but uh, over 30 years later, I found her, and I said to her, I said, you know, you're the first woman I'd ever seen that was in a professional role. And so we can find inspiration all around us if we look for it. But I, but I don't um, 
know that there's any one person in particular. It was just the women that had already achieved that allowed me to learn from them and that inspired me to achieve. I hope that this conference inspires the next generation of leaders in this country, and I think that it will. You have a terrific program. The interest of the, the young people that I saw was genuine, and there was just a spark there. I know that they're going to take away what they need to take away to take them to the next step. And so I do thank you for putting this conference together and for making a difference. I wish that there had been more conferences like this when I was growing up because I think they make a difference. I think they inspire, I think they engage, and I think they serve as the catalyst for change.